Between 1450 and 1750, the world got smaller. Did you know the world changes size? Well, of course it doesn't. What I mean is that throughout history, the connections between different people and places grow and shrink, along with the rise and fall of empires, religions, and trade routes. At the height of the Roman Empire in the early 2nd century CE, you could travel from Scotland to Iran and speak the same language, recognize the same gods, and spend the same money. From the beginning of the 7th century, the Umayyad Caliphate spread from the Middle East into the Mediterranean, uniting North Africa and Southern Europe in an expansive new Islamic empire jump forward to the late 13th century and in less than 40 years the previously unknown Mongol Empire spread from Asia into Europe creating the largest contiguous land empire in recorded history. History adventures, empires and interconnections takes you through one of these moments when the world got smaller. In the 300 years between 1450 and 1750, European trading empires, enabled by technological advances, expanded across the world's oceans and exerted their influence over local populations from America to India and beyond. Europe's rapid expansion did not go unchallenged. From the Peruvian mountains to the Bay of Bengal and the castles of Tokugawa, Japan, people tried to make sense of the arrival of Europeans. Some fought, others lost their independence, a few held out and kept the explorers at a distance. This edition of History Adventures, The World of Characters, examines this crucial moment in early modern history through the experiences of six characters who were there. Every character had to make a choice about where they would fit into this shrinking world. In 1453, one woman, Iowanina, stood at a turning point in world history. That fateful year, she witnessed the armies of the Ottoman Empire, commanded by Sultan Mehmed II, capture Constantinople. Iowanina did not realize it at the time, but the fall of this last remnant of the once all-powerful Rome would usher in a new era of empires. As the victorious Ottomans cut off access to the Silk Road, European explorers would set sail to find new trade routes to the east. Ioannina had to decide which future to embrace. Would she stay in the city of her birth or flee westward to Venice? In the 1490s, the first explorers tried to find new routes to the east by sailing west across the Atlantic. Instead of China or India, they accidentally discovered America. A group of state-sponsored adventurers soon followed with dreams of conquest. Our conquistador, Louis-Philippe Gutierrez, sailed to Peru in 1555, determined to make a name for himself. Instead of fame and riches, he found devastated cities and people dying of strange diseases. Should he give up, survive, but be forgotten, or struggle on in the vainglorious cause of conquest? In Tokugawa, Japan, Ishii, an influential interpreter in the shogun's court, watched the arrival of European explorers with growing concern. Not everybody tried to cross the Atlantic. Others had sailed across the Indian Ocean and by 1600 had arrived uninvited on Japanese shores. Ishii was not worried about conquistadors, but Christian missionaries who had infiltrated her land and dishonored her ways with their proselytizing. Ishii wondered, should they be tolerated, banished, or simply killed? Half a world away, in the English colony of Jamestown, an enslaved Angolan faced a different challenge. Born in West Africa, kidnapped by slave traders, and forcibly renamed William, he was sold in the small English colony in 1619. A victim of the growing Atlantic slave trade, William was one of millions of Africans transported across the Atlantic against their will and forced to labor in expanding European empires. Should William run away and ally with local Native American tribes, or stay in Jamestown and survive some other way? A century later, we find one man 
Jonas was still struggling to find his place in the Atlantic world. By 1700, small colonies had turned into large empires, and the days of adventurers were almost over. As trading companies and governments tightened their grip, a few men, like Jonas, rebelled and turned pirate. Based in the notorious pirate haven of Nassau in the Caribbean, Jonas plundered merchant ships. The question was, for how long could he escape the hangman's noose? Nowhere was the growing power of empires felt more keenly than in India. In the Bay of Bengal, a local tax collector also struggled against British expansionism. Officially, Arun was a Zamadar, a regional official in the Mughal Empire. But by the 1750s, he was under growing pressure from the trading company turned empire builder, the self-titled Honourable East India Company, to change sides. In 1757, his time was up. As the Honourable East India Company seized control of Bengal on the battlefield, Arun had to decide where his loyalties lay. Just like everyone in history adventures, you will have to decide where you stand in this new world of empires and interconnections. Would you fight for your independence or take your chances? Ultimately, the experiences of Iowanina, Ishii, Louis, William, Jonas and Arun challenge you to think, what would I have done? And this is the best question about the past that you can ever ask.